Hey guys, it's another bright and sunny day in New Mexico. So, I recently had to sell my Subaru so I could pay off my debts for school, because that's priority number one. And I uh, needed some cheap transportation. Well, being debt free does not mean that you need a crappy car. But that's exactly what I found for myself. There she is, folks. 1984 Volvo 245, affectionately named Carol. Yeah, she's kind of a rough customer, but hey, if you love Volvo, and I think you do, then you know that this does not mean that she has to stay this dented, ugly old mess for long, because we like these old cars so much that we're willing to do restorations on them. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spend a couple of weeks getting her back into tip-top shape. This car came with a whole bunch of extra parts, so hopefully I don't need to make too many runs out. But uh, I hope you're excited, because I'm excited. Please take mine. Just take a little, I'll burn the light. My life is in your hands, and I'll never want the fire to stop. Maybe it's a little too ambitious right now for me to be doing another restoration video series considering that I've got the 67 Amazon wagon in the garage. But there's just something about this car that screams, save me, and I think I'm gonna do that. It also came with a stack of 20 pounds worth of paperwork. I'm sure something's gonna fall out. It's like Zabumufu's closet. A tow hitch with trailer hookups. Power locks some degree. It's reading 226 on the clock. The owner claims it has more than 400,000. I'm still trying to figure out if this is just a replacement cluster or what's been going on because I don't think any 240 has made it over 30 years without having the odometer break. One of my favorite bits here is these five gauges. We've got our mobile clock which actually works. I've been checking it out and it, it's really cool. Finally works. Uh, ambient temperature, oil pressure, vacuum, and voltage. That voltage gauge is from an Audi or a Volkswagen. Those are the two logos displaying on the top of it. But it fits the 52 millimeter pod all the same. Every one of those works, the lights work, and it's pretty cool. Another one of my favorite things, an M46 with a working overdrive. I would prefer the M47, but it's quite all right. My biggest concern about this car is all of the wiring I'm going to be getting into. There's been a lot of aftermarket hookups, and that makes me nervous. The more work that's done is probably the more I have to undo. For example, we've got two rheostats here. The rheostat is just a variable resistor. The arm swings across the coil here and changes the uh, ohms going out. So I really just want to clean up this wiring, see what I need, see what I don't need, and go from there. Some other cool stuff that's been added. Power mirror for the right side only. Two power window switches. That would be the rear passenger and the front passenger. There is an issue with the blower motor. It stays on pretty much all the time. At least that's what I thought, but then it suddenly turns off. So when it's on zero, it's on one. When I put it on one, it is on one. Two, three, four, still work. We're gonna try to figure that out. Here on the left side, we've got a switch that is for our front fan in front of the radiator, in front of the air conditioning condenser, which is to keep the car cool when the AC is on. Another thing I'd like to replace is these door panels. They're all taped. This is a plate that is a exact measurement of the firewall. You can see where the clutch cable goes in, other cables and things like that, and it's basically to fix the cracked firewall. It's a common issue. So I've got the quad rounds on it. They're uh, temporary until I get my e-codes in. This is kind of cool. We have a little nozzle spray from the washer bottle. It's connected there to keep the fan cool. There's the electric fan that I installed. I'll show you a bit on that. Um, several relays with wiring that needs to be cleaned up. I believe one of them is for the front fan. I'm not sure of the other one's purpose. And then that's for the electric fan. A couple of fuses, more relay. There's the electric fan relay from a Volvo 960. This engine is loud. I mean, you're at 2000 RPM, it sounds like you're at four. And when you hit four, it sounds like you're at eight. So 
I'm not really sure what's going on with the noise. I still want to make sure that it's in time. With the, I'll grab a timing light and adjust all that since I did a little bit of work already. Up here we've got the mileage and some of the stuff performed. Currently the car does not have a power steering pump attached. I need to replace the power steering rack. Some more wiring for me to clean up just because I'm, I'm somewhat picky about all that. It goes over to the oil pressure sender, uh, which is the nice thing that it's an electric sender. You don't have to deal with plumbing and oil line like I have in Arthur. Uh, this radiator is awesome. It's a heavy duty radiator. It's a big metal one, no plastic on it, which is really cool. As long as it's operating efficiently, I'll keep it with LH 2.0. Hopefully I'm not in over my head with this car. Um, I love old 240 wagons. I've been itching to have one ever since I sold my first coupe. And I have another coupe on the side of Soren's house that I haven't been able to touch for a couple years. It's got a big project in there. Oh man, look at that. This is the utilitarian back seat. So having no back seat made it possible for him to have this flipped up and that down and having no uh, cushions here allowed the seats to move further back because it was always used for storage, either for the German Shepherd, the Corgi, or the boxes of a million things. Came with like several different feet for the roof rack, much like this one here, that attached to the rain gutter. Um, one thing I'm gonna be doing is removing the original OEM rack. I don't really like it, and it'll be a little more streamlined. So I'm trying to get some more fuel economy out of this car.